And yeah. that's how usually how it goes. It go it, when you, when you do it right, you do it smooth. They're not going to ask you with the rate. They literally won't even be really concerned about it. They just want the 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 benefits that you outlined. More importantly, they want that money in the bank that you outlined. Yeah. Right? So they're motivated that way. And if you if you aligned it enough where where you created a solution to every single thing that they're concerned about, not only that, but you also outline the risk if they didn't buy, then they're going to be in a position where they're going to say, okay, fuck it, let's just do it. And so when you, when, you know, after you frame them and said, because he mentioned this was important, I wanted to make sure, is this sound about right? Is there anything that I'm missing? And then she's going to say, no, nope, it looks like he did everything pretty good. Yeah. Say, okay, great. So what I'm going to do is release out the disclosures right now. But I had an idea and I wanted to run it by you real quick. And this is where our pitch turns from rate turn to cash out, right? It turns from, oh, I wanted HELOC to now we're selling you cash out one loan. Or it went from cash out with 30% equity in the home, but we're now selling them on an FHA cash out because the fight goes down, right? Yeah. It's whatever, because it's always going to be something different from what they were planning on getting, right? Yeah. But because we primed them and said, hey, this is what you need, and say, hey, I got an idea. I want to run it by you. I can actually do, now you're handling all the debts. I can actually free up enough cash flow so you're not at a deficit. More importantly is I can save you about $500 per month, which will enable you to have at least six months of living expenses in X amount of months. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're adding the payment deferral plus the escrow refund plus the monthly savings. And then you're dividing that by six, right? Or, or you're trying to figure out six months of their living expenses. Mm -hmm. And so, and so if, if I knew that I'm freeing up the total amount of five G's and six months of living expenses to them is 10 grand, then I know that I can I can achieve that within ten months at a five hundred dollar monthly savings, right? So yeah. so the whole idea is to show them how to get, and you don't, you don't need to do six months; you do three months. The bottom line is to make them make them imagine having X amount of money in their bank, right? Because we're visually trying to have them not only spend the savings, but also envision what it would feel like, right? And that's how we're attaching our solution to their pain, and so. You know, he had mentioned that it was important for, for you guys to create the savings. And what I was able to do, and I want to run this by you, is I am able to create this savings and then some. Meaning, not only am I able to create the monthly savings, but I can also put X amount of money in your bank. And I'm talking about the payment deferral and the escrow refund, right? But I can also show you how to improve your credit score so that any time you ever refinance, you're going to be in the best position to get the absolute best, right, that, that's available. And plus, since you'll be part of our portfolio, we're actually going to notify you now moving forward if the market enables you to improve your term. And because you're in our portfolio, that will be a courtesy offer. It's a loyalty program that, that our clients take advantage of and is one of the main reasons that homeowners in Orange County choose to do business with us. Now you're bringing in a community, right? Yeah. And so now it's like, oh, okay, cool. So my, my entire community does this. Got it. Okay. And say, you know what, but before I even go over that, let me, let me see what you think about this. Here's the idea, is that we can bring your total payment and I can deliver all these benefits and bring your payment down to here with, uh, with no lender fee. And then here with no closing costs. So if you ask me, I would pick this one, and I'm choosing the one with the lower fee. Uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the lower lender credit. I'm saying... Because we do such high volume in Orange County, our, our settlement services, we don't charge broker fees or any broker points, right? So there's no excess fees. You just have to worry about title and escrow. But here's my idea is because I'm already freeing up this mortgage payment plus the escrow refund, technically you can use that deferred payment to cover the rest of the closing costs, right? I'm already covering the closing or the lender fee at this amount. You know, however you want to chop it up and, and drive it, but you kind of get the point, right? Yeah. And say, you know, I wanted to get your idea and your input because I would go with this one. What's your, you know, what's your input? And then they'll tell you that, oh, okay, I, it makes sense. Because after you give them 1600 lender credit, then the rest is like two Gs. Yeah. Right? For the rest of the settlement services. And say, technically, you got that with your payment deferral, plus you get the lower payment. So what's your, you know, what's your input on that? And then they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay. I say, okay, cool. I thought you'd say that. I'm going to go ahead and release that out now. And this is how I fuse into the lock. Yeah. Okay. 
So, um, but before we can actually, I can actually uh, confirm you're, you're eligible to move forward, I can't lock the loan until I validate your ability to proceed. So what I can do though is, since I only need a few doc, and this is where you're selling how easy it is to go with us, right? Since I don't need full tax returns, I'm saying this to even W-2 employees. Say, I'm a direct conduit. I don't need two years tax returns. <laughs> Yeah, I don't need your 1040s. I don't need any of that. As a matter of fact, I just need a, a pay stub or whatever the cert says, right? Yeah. And say, and a recent mortgage chain, blah, 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 and whatever minimal documents. Say, I only need these items to validate your ability to proceed. And if, you, if I can get this within 24 hours, then I'll release the disclosure as locked, meaning that you're protected from the increase in interest rate. Okay. Right. And so that is the transition. It's important that they don't believe that they're locked. Right? Because you could do the lock script after full package. Right? So the full package comes in tomorrow. And then you do the lock script. And it's going to be based on whatever the date yesterday. Because you're going to make the decision based on the emotion of that call. Yeah. You can tell. Like they're going to get it. Like, oh yeah, I'll have this first thing tomorrow morning. And yeah. that's how usually how it goes. It go, when, it, when you do it right, you do it smooth. They're not going to ask you with the rate. They literally won't even be really concerned about it. They just want the, the, the benefits that you outlined. More importantly, they want that money in the bank that you outlined. Yeah. Right? So they're motivated that way. And if you, if you aligned it enough where, where you created a solution to every single thing that they're concerned about, not only that, but you also outline the risk if they didn't buy, then they're going to be in a position where they're going to say, okay, fuck it, let's just do it. Right, and now we outline how easy it is to get validated, right? But this is a whole SIP package, yeah. and so and so, um, you know, say okay, I'm gonna need these documents by tomorrow, or the reservation is gonna expire. Now they're enticed to you know to get you as soon as possible. Okay, and then um, uh, of course within that time, your LOA jumps in, and they do the SIP, uh, the the wet documents in the SIP list, mm -hmm. and they should CC you on that, right? Okay. So once you see that, if they're not, you want to make sure they are. So if, if, if once they once you see that, reply back all and say, thanks, Carrie, right? Or or thanks, Julio. Um, uh, you know, Jeremiah, right below are just a few items that I need to validate for you. Remember, I need these by 10 a.m. That goes a long way just by you doing that. Yeah. Right? Puts okay. you in a position of authority because you have an assistant, and it reminds them that they need by 10 a.m. And if they reply back and say, got it, you'll have it by tonight or whatever, then yeah, okay, cool, I got this person. Mm -hmm. right? They're locked. And that's a confident lock. Not only that, but you don't, you're, not, you're not setting yourself up where they're walking away from it thinking it's just options. Yeah. Right? It's a completely different interpretation from them. They feel like they kind of helped you design it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, uh, like they thought up, a, they thought about it, and that's the whole. Like you're gonna, you hear me mention sometimes if you go to these uh, breakfast of champions, is that your your pitch should sound like teamwork, right? Like it's shooting ideas back and forth, like you like we're designing this together. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is just the whole uh, approach is really just to dismantle that guard that they would initially have if they believe that they're going over options. Yeah, makes okay. sense. Gotcha, gotcha. And so, okay. and so, if they're not at guard and, and they're actually being open with you, but if you open in a way of kind of like, hey, you, you know, oh man, guess what I heard, right? Like, you, if you've heard that from like a friend or even your spouse or someone, right? If there's yeah. something about it that catches your attention and you are now open, right? Gotcha. Um, it's kind of like when you're talking to someone and they just keep talking and talking and talking and they go left field on you, right? Like, one of the ways to stop and bring the attention back to you is saying, Oh, wait, you know what? Before I forget, you actually interrupt them. Before I forget, and then take over the, 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 uh, the conversation. Yeah. Because that, that triggers them to listen to you, right? Like, yeah. oh, wait, before I forget, I want to, uh, you know what? Can you confirm, is this your primary residence <laughs> or wherever you are in the application? Yeah. And usually that, that does a trick to take back the conversation. Okay. You know, um, but yeah, there's certain triggers like that. And then, uh, so ideally, they should have the documents back in further. But now you also have reason to call them back, right? Or send them an email and say, hey, you know, we only got a few more hours in our reservation. I need to, I need to tell my manager what we're doing and blame me. Okay. Right? And then, and then it, it helps because it'll open up the door where if I need to do a second call, right, they're on the same wavelength. 
Like, okay. hey, you know, I, I spoke with Jeremiah. We had mentioned we put this offer together. We only, you know, I wasn't able to, he, he confirmed he didn't validate you. Is there any questions that, that, I, that you have? And sometimes they'll spill their beans to me. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you know, I think Jeremiah did great. But then we got a call from the broker friend next door. Yeah. And me and my husband thought that, hey, you know, we're going to get a tax refund. So we'll just use that. And then at least now I can get a second chance in that bat. Right? Okay. So I'll get it back to you, you know. Um, but at least it puts us to where they're at mentally. We get an answer. Because if we get an answer then rather than four or five days into it, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Right? Not only that, but your resources aren't chasing after it either. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then and then with regards to like uh, uh, um, objections on rate, right, or fees, because they, they there still will be people who are just not impressed with the interest rate. Yeah. And unless we are confident with the monthly savings, it's going to come through our tone and we're going to pre, we're going to kind of pre pre-wire them to not view it the same as also. And so sometimes you just got to get real creative. And what I found work is that when you're selling the payment deferral the escrow refund in the 1999, usually you can get a lot done. Yeah. Right? Usually it's about 3 or 4 grand and then you can find debt on their credit report. So for example, if I'm selling a rate and term refinance, but I'm not really lowering their rate or lowering their payment, I'm looking at, well, how much money am I going to put in the bank with payment deferral, escrow refund, and, um, and, uh, and cash out on that from escrow right to its limit. And then I'll associate the credit cards that they have. So if they have like three accounts that come up to like six grand, I'm, and before I pitch them, I'm going to ask them and say, hey, you know what? I, I, I got a quick question. I didn't get a chance to confirm. You got three cards. How much are you sending this one? How much are you sending this one? I wouldn't go off the minimum payment. Yeah, I usually go minimum. So like, okay, so Mac, you're what they're putting out. Okay, correct. Yeah, gotcha. And then it also gives you a chance to bridge it a little bit deeper into that because you can you can then kind of um, make it seem like you know a bigger issue by saying like for example if I said hey you know like this Chase card how much do you send and if they say the minimum payment they say oh okay I you know what I noticed that's the minimum payment are you just sending the minimum you're not sending above and beyond mm-hmm. say yeah we're just saying minimum oh I see. Okay, gotcha. and kind of just put them in that position, right? Like, oh, okay, right? Awkward, yeah, I yeah. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. and say, um, okay, well, maybe you're taking advantage of a no interest rate special for twelve months. <laughs> yeah. And when they say no, say, oh, okay, all right, and then just move on from it, revisit it later, because that's a big piece of leverage that you can now bring up. If they say, oh, you know, I need to think about it. I say, bottom line is, you're paying the bot, you know, you're paying the minimum payment on these credit cards. I'm going to show you how to pay it off. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and then if I know that they make give me kickback on on the interest rate or the payment savings, then I'm selling the future to them. I'm selling the idea of conditioning so that that let's say those three credit cards, each one of them exceeds thirty percent of its max limit. I'm telling them what that's doing to their FICO, the credit bureaus. I'm even reading the credit bureau notes. You know, how credit bureaus say. Uh, credit to max high limit too high. Dead or yeah, yeah. Okay. and I'm sending them snapshots. Even I'm saying, look, this is what experience is saying about you right now. I'm going to help you remove this comment. Mm. That's powerful, dude. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now you become the because no other loan officer is pitching that way, right? They're Nobody, just pitching yeah. like, hey, you know, I got option one, two. Like you, of all uh, most loan officers that I've had a chance to sit with, and I heard the second call, you've actually have the absolute best method. By telling them, or rehashing them first, framing them first, you know, mm-hmm. I think that 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 plays a big role in your success. Mm-hmm. Is because you're not just going in without having consideration of how they are mentally. Yeah, you know, you got to put them back in that state. Okay, cool, cool, very, very cool. Gotcha. Okay, and I guess now I'm starting to switch, and now I'm starting to really focus on going past clients using hey the re, you know retention team availability of going through the leads because everything I've been doing so far has been queue calls. Yep. And what I've noticed is the only people that stay on the phone are retired old people <laughs> that just want yeah. to talk. That's why you've seen all, all my requests say, hey, I need a FedEx package, FedEx mm-hmm. package, you know? So that's the challenge I've been having with the ones I've had with locking it up front because I'm like, okay, great. Go over the benefit. Do you want to move forward? Yeah, okay, great. So what's the good email? I don't have email, you know? Yeah. Okay, when are you thinking of these documents? Ah, uh, it's probably going to take me a week, you yeah. know? So that's the yeah. challenge I have, so... That's what you're going to run into, and, it, you know, those leads, they need help too, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and so sometimes you just have to think outside the box of a prospect ever told me they didn't have an email or computer. I would ask them to say, no worries, do you have any kids in the house mm-hmm. that have a computer? Because sometimes there is. Yeah. Like, oh, my, 
my granddaughter lives with us and she has one of those iPads. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, she yeah. has one of those tablets. And sometimes that becomes our pocket. Okay. But in all else fails, so let's say it's old Mildred and Winston, right? Mm-hmm. In in Idaho, then what I'll do is is I'll pull up Yelp, put in their address, and then put Kinkos. Okay. Right? And it'll pull up like, hey, there's this Kinkos two miles away from you. It's on ninetieth and Richmond. You know where that is? They're gonna say, Yeah, I know exactly where that's at. Okay, cool. I'm going to give them a call. They're going to be holding on a pair of documents for you, right? And you just need to bring these items with you and uh, hold on to the receipt because I'm going to get you a lender credit for that. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Cool. Makes sense? Yeah. And let's say they don't have any money to send a fax. Say, no worries. When you go over there, he's going to have a prepaid FedEx label for you. Just give him the documents. He'll put it in the package and send them over to me. That puts a little bit more control in the timeline. Because if, if they don't have um, email, then we're relying on whatever piece of trash that they wrote the notes on, right? Yeah. Like they might have wrote a stip list like on a piece of junk mail and lost a junk mail. Yep. And so if we if we have the solution, we have kind of a map for them, it's easier for them to comply, but it makes it easier for them, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so that would be a way that I... Because we, if we do get that call, the last thing, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult if we rely on them. And so if we, if we take more control over the logistics, all we need is their package. That's yeah. it. Right? And usually that's the toughest part if they don't have an email. Yeah. And then disclosures or what have you. And so that, that's a good remedy okay, cool. to use. And then, but, but I do agree with you. I mean, with the dialer, it's kind of, it's a flip of a coin. <laughs> yeah. You know, and depending on who you're going to engage with. And so your first conversation should be formatted in a way where you identify, at least within the first 10 minutes of who you're dealing with. Yeah. Right, and so if you got self-employed uh, prospect who you know hasn't refinanced in six years, and kind of see the flag in that, yeah, right, and then start maybe go straight into income, right, versus getting to know each other and build a bond, yeah, and just look out for cues like that and say, well, how come you haven't moved? Why are you the only one applying for HARP in 2018? Right, yeah. there's reasons, there's underlying reasons, and if we ever want to test them, just say, hey, you know what? Before I go any further, let me let me get a blessing first. Send me over your tax return. And just test them to see how, how motivated they are. And if they do, then you got someone who's playing ball, right? Yeah. But it's important to not use that as kind of a ditch method because sometimes at the height of things, when you're fresh air, you got a lot on your plate, you might be like, ah, oh, fuck it. Or, well, send me this. You know, but technically we're giving them false hope because they believe that there's a chance, but all we want to do is get them off the phone. Yeah. So if we do use that strategy and that method, we have to be coherent or at least um, do it responsibly. Yeah. You know, like build some sort of excitement, make sure there's a deal first, and then put them on the test. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. Sweet. I mean, I think it's pretty much most of it, and then just creating the sense of urgency, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think another, that's... Yeah, another technique to sense of urgency. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> let's say, and this used to work money for me, you know, Ray was my manager. Ray, uh, he was very aggressive in pricing. Okay. And so um, anytime I ever price out options, I typically stuck with three. And it was uh, it, or mainly two, but it was no closer, no lender fee, no appraisal. Okay. Right, so it was basically 2100 no lender, no appraisal, and no closer. And, and then I could sell apart. Okay. Um, but as far as uh, uh, the way I, I, would, I would relay it to the prospect, is let's say I got $3,000 lender credit for my offer, I'm going to pitch it as if I only have 1000 Yeah. Right? Because um, the way I pitch, though, is, is different, is I get them wanting the payment first, right? But if I have a feeling that I don't necessarily, I'm not sync with them, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell them to say, hey, well, this payment is only giving $1,000 lender credit, right? Uh, I won't say only. You still want to make it sound nice. And say, with this, I'm, I'm able to issue $1,000. What I do need, though, is, is your documents. And I have an idea. If I can get your documents by tomorrow, I'm going to bring to my manager an exception request to see if I can get this to the total fee of 3000 We already know we have that. Yeah. yeah. Right? And say, but he's not going to grant me that exception unless I have a full file and I've you know, buttoned everything up real nice and neat. Now, I'm actually going to be doing it within this time period of tomorrow. So if you can give me your documents, I can include your file to be reviewed. Okay. You know, so it's kind of now you're giving them the option. They're likely to respond quicker because they have a fear of missing out on the rest of the lender credit. Yeah. 
Whereas, whereas we have an option, we can say, hey, you know, I can give you this rate with $3,000 under credit. There's no real excitement anymore. I can't yeah. build off that. Yeah, okay, don't sense. give them everything. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and that's going to be helpful for, you know, the, 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 the price crunchers, right? The ones all about fees. The ones all about lender credit. They feel that they shouldn't pay any fees. But that's the way to go in about it. You know, get them sold on the payment first and say, okay, well, you know what, this one, uh, this particular payment issues enough lender credit to wipe out $1,000 of your closing costs, but I have an idea. Let's do this. Get me your documents by tomorrow morning. I'm going to bring it to my manager and ask for an exception to see if you can wipe out all the closing costs, right? Because we already have them at a point where they bought into the payment. Now it's just making them get to the bridge faster. Mm -hmm. so, so it might be something that you want to play with and do them on every single loan, right? Especially right now. And so even if they come back and say, oh, well, the, the costs are too high, great. We want that objection, right? You say, okay, well, you know what? I have an idea, and this will help you with your cost concern. If you can give me your documents by tomorrow, I'm going to ask to see if we can wipe them all out. But you already know you can wipe okay, them all out. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and so it, once we get the documents in, then we you know, say, okay, I'm going to go meet with my manager, blah, 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 get everything buttoned up. And then, um, and then when we call them back, say, "Hey, got the approval? I, I got uh, the appraiser reaching out to you. Please, please set that appointment as soon as possible." Now we want them to get vested in as well. Okay, cool. Makes sense. Yeah. But you're yeah. you're kind of just playing the middleman. You're playing the role. You know, you're building up this uh, kind of story to get it. And sometimes that's just what it takes. You know, we're not necessarily lying to them because we could have given them a thousand dollars lender credit. Yeah, but yeah. You got an exception for three thousand. Yeah, it makes them feel like you're really batting for them and yes. you're on their side. Okay. Yes, and it's a win-win because now they got a gnarly exception and we have the full file. Yeah. Right. So when you when you when you figure out this process and you get it mounted up just right, you're going to notice that you could literally hand off the baton from the LOA and you never talk to the, to the prospect again. Yeah. Everything's based on email, and then and then once they go into processing, they're already kind of set up because you're saying, hey, you know what, you're, we're going to be signed a processor. Um, when you get that, that alert that, hey, your processor is so-and-so, you reply back on that on the all and say, hey, um, you know, thank you in advance for being prompt on anything that we ask. We're going to try and get everything closed out real quick. You nice. drop a seed like that and it kind of again reasserts like, okay, anything that Paula asks or Latoya asks or whoever the processor asks, that you know, we have to be prompt. You kind of set it. the tone, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. I guess the last one I'm dealing with because I'm still obviously taking calls. and. Yep. I feel like most of the issues I have, obviously, they're shopping with a lot of lenders. So sure. I get a lot of people say, hey, here's the deal. You know, before you give me any of your offers, I want you to know that I'm going with the best offer. Mm -hmm. So you better make sure you're giving me the absolute best, you know. Mm -hmm. And if it is the best, then I'll give you a call back, you know. But mm -hmm. other than that, you know, if I find a better deal, I'm going with them. So what do you have for me? That's kind of yep. a lot of the calls I get. So it's kind of like, okay. Well, and I, I kind of go, okay, great. Well, obviously, you want the best deal. And I start going to the benefit. Hey, we're a direct conduit. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, so I have availability to all sorts of programs that are going to give you benefit. You know, I try to fill them out, so you know, I want to make sure it's going to be the best deal for you, and I hate for you to go back and forth. You know, what sure. what do you have on the table now? And sure. I can start kind of you know comparing and seeing that we can be more competitive. That's kind of how I pitch it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of like, hey man, I'm not going to tell you what I have. You know, you yeah. just tell me what you got, and I'll let yeah. you know. So yeah, yeah. I have a hard time with those kind of points. Sure. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. So um, I, I know exactly what you mean. As far as like triggers and, and retention, these leads are the ones who are already actually shopping right? yeah. for whatever reason. So we, we, we already walk into a point where we they're shopping. Yeah. But we don't just call them out on it, right? Yeah. And But what happens when they mention it's like, hey, you know, Daniel, just so you know, I'm shopping with nine people right now. And I'm going to go with the best offer. The, the normal reaction would be, well, what are they offering you? Yeah. <laughs> right? But if you hit them with something that they're not used to hearing, you're going to make noise in a different way. So hit them with this instead. Say, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. So <laughs> okay, <cool. laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Let me go and show you why, right? Why, why we're the best. But ultimately what you do is they say, hey, you know, Daniel, I'm, I'm actually shopping with nine different lenders. I'm only going to go with the best one. Say, that's awesome. I, as a matter of fact, you should compare because there's just so many different options. Yeah. Fortunately, we all go to the same location like I had mentioned to you. The only thing I can put in front of you is what you qualify for. It's not going to be based on us paying your appraiser, right? Us showing you an adjustable rate mortgage. We don't operate that way. And I'm not saying that any of these companies are operating that way. But what I'm telling you is that we all go to the same cow for the milk. Gotcha. The only reason why you would go with me is because I don't have broker points. I don't sell off my loan. 
I'm your only point of contact. And I'll cover you know, more later on if necessary, but first let me just make sure I can even complete this call. Now it's just like, whoa, fuck, all right, cool. Because yeah. that's all they want, right? It's like, hurry up, tell me your best deal. I don't want to waste any time. Yeah. And so you've invited it to a point where you're, you, you assume more value. Like you're more valuable now, yeah. right? Where all your other competitors are like, well, what do they get? We get the best rate. We could beat anyone. Yeah. Right? But when we make noise in a different way and, and we say, um, you know what? That's awesome. Let me show you side by side exactly what, how we compare and you're going to see why every homeowner in your area actually chooses us, right? And start kind of wording it, wording it that way. Okay. And say, and then and then go into the conversation. The last thing you want to do is go into the price. You want to give them the the kind of the the um, idea that let's make sure I can even move forward with our call first, right? Because the only thing I can put in front of you is what you qualify for. I don't operate like a lot of these banks and brokers that shows you best case. I'm yeah. simply not allowed to do that. I can only send to you what you qualify for. So if anything, you get to see an x-ray when you compare it to the other lenders. And just assume it, that they're going to get it. And then move right into application. But the, 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 you'll notice that the key thing is I never ask what they're offering because I don't want the focus to be on price. Yeah, I'm okay. slowly planting seeds to put the focus on benefit instead. Right. Gotcha. And so if I knew that this person was shopping and saying, okay, cool. So, um, I understand you're looking for a 30 year fix, obviously the lowest interest rate. Fortunately you're with us. So we're direct sort or conduit to the source. And so when I send out the, um, the estimate, it's going to be based on what you actually get approved with, with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac or VA or FHA, whatever type of loan situation they're searching for. Right. And say, um, you know, I, I, I do have access to their underwriting system, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a few notes. And I may verify things during this conversation because I'm going to feed it directly to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, right? In okay. other words, I'm going to feed it directly onto your 1003 when I run Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Yeah. And so these are notes. We're not, you know, we're not swaying them. We're not, you know, yeah. misleading them in any way. And so when you put in the notes, um, you know, and you're saying, hey, you know what? Let me make mention. Let me, put, let me add this note to your file real quick. With the monthly savings, what did you intend to do with it? Did you intend to put it towards balance on the mortgage balance, invest it into the home, or like improvements, or put it towards other debt obligations like credit cards, payments? And so now it sounds like something that's kind of just a regular question, right? And uh, uh, th and so they're, they're going to tell you, well, I want to put the monthly savings in the bank or put it towards other credit card debt. Okay, great. That's a good that's a good use for it. Just out of curiosity, how much in credit card debt now? Right now, you're trying to pin them and position them to a point of need. Mm -hmm. And say, okay, so based on the information you shared with me, and after you cover all the details, based on the information you shared with me and the fact that you actually are comparing, it's good that you're doing it now because the rate's fluctuating. And yeah. now I'm planting the seed of moving fast. And with the fluctuating market, depending on who you're going with, they may, there may be underlying fees. So the best way to do it is to actually ensure that, that you get a proper disclosure. A proper disclosure is not an estimate that's sent to you without you giving income documents, just so you know. You're right, and you're telling them that. Mm. Now they're associating every loan estimate that they got, you likelihood, that yeah, issue. that's not really, really Proper. legit. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. But I didn't say it in that, I didn't say it like I'm affecting them, like, oh, they're lying to you, right? Yeah. I'm just saying it in a way where I become an educator and I have more authority, right? Gotcha. And say, um, you know, just, just for your own records, any loan estimate you have is not valid until you've submitted documentation. Just like the disclosure I'm going to send to you right now is going to be based on what you can get right now, assuming I validated your approval. But I can't put it in official writing lock that you can count on and make a decision on until you become validated. Now, here's the good news is because I'm a direct conduit, I don't need two years tax returns. I don't need two years W-2s. Now you're making it easier to go with you versus everyone else. Yeah. Makes sense? Yep. Um, not to mention... Beyond, I don't even need an appraisal sometimes. Now it's like, oh fuck, I want to work with this dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, because everyone's trying to book him for an appraisal. Yep, and yeah. make him pay out of pocket for it. Yeah, okay. correct. Yeah, and say so the last thing you want to do is end up with a company that's just going to sell your loan off, and you're going to have a nightmare with their servicing. And then you ask them, say, have you ever had you know bad experience with the mortgage holder? And then they're going to go, oh fuck yeah, blah blah blah. I'll say yeah. That's why a lot of uh, homeowners in Orange County choose us is because we become the name on the mortgage statement. Yeah. I'm, I will I will remain your point of contact here. Gotcha. Cool.
Some good stuff? Yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff I gotta sit down and kind of like yeah. figure it out, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah you'll have access to, you know, the content as well. You know, yeah. So if you ever want to revisit it. And pay yeah, that'd be cool. Do you gotta check out some of the um, stuff that I've been, I've been collecting with uh, the other team members okay. and other agents? Because they're actually announcing different objections that you may have or issues that you might have. Yeah. And it's just a, a good insight, you know, because you put in a lot of time and, and I know that there's going to be a point where it's just going to click and you're going to yeah. find that groove and it's just going to be plug and play. And you're going to yeah. be up there with Kevin and, and Winston and the major hitters, dude. Like you're just going to figure it out. Yeah. You know, you're already doing everything right as far as creating the momentum and putting in the time. Now it's just a matter of, of, of that click. Yeah. Right. It's like, boom, there it is. And when that happens, oh, it's nuts, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm trying to learn and I don't mind putting in the hours. Even when they start clicking, that's when I want to put in even yes. more hours. Right. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? So yeah. I'm not trying to like, okay, cool. I'm going to be lazy and just take off. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm making some real money. So. Yeah. No banger.